in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. That there is a difference between power and authority. Um, this may sound like an error, but it's important for your learning. This is a conference. God does not have authority. God cannot have authority. Authority is the legitimacy to use power. Are we together? Yes. And every time you bring authority, there are two things that must happen. One, you must give authority jurisdiction. We have a lot of judicial people here. There is no authority without jurisdiction. No kind of authority works indefinitely. What gives value to authority is that you define its jurisdiction. Number two, authority cannot function except a higher power supervises its use. Are we together? <laughs> so when you say God has authority, it means there has to be another being and a deity higher than him that number one, defines his use of that power and number two, supervises his compliance to the terms of use. Now, all authority has been given to me, Jesus said, when he became a man. Are we together now? Yes. It is men that have authority and power. As a man, if you have power alone, you are dangerous, like an arm robber. An arm robber has power in a gun, but has no authority. That is why he's arrested when he uses it versus a military man who has power and authority so authority is the legitimacy to use power are we together what god gave believers is not just power don't seek power alone no it is dangerous he gives power and authority those who have power alone are rebels the centurion understood this and he said for i am a man he never said i'm a powerful man he said, I am a man under authority. My power is derived from the authority I submit to. And I say to one, go, and he will go. To another, come, and he will come. He said, Jesus, I know that you did not just come with power. As God incarnate, manifest in the flesh, you also have authority. There were times where Jesus was going to heal people. He took them out of certain cities into certain cities to heal them. And so when he resurrected, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth is the word exousia the legitimacy to to exercise power has been given to me are we together now and i give you that same authority god the father does not have authority he has absolute power his power is not derived he was not given it's not a product of conquest he did not fight for it he is the owner are we together if you don't understand this, one day demons will tell you, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? They will question your walking in power and question your walking in authority. Do you know the meaning of this? When God limits himself as far as exercising power, it is not weakness. It is for the sake of the saints. <laughs> Many times we teach, and sincerely so, that... If we don't give God permission, he cannot move. That is a very sincere theology, but it's not accurate. He is the owner of the power. If God vetoes your will, he is not in error. It is still his power. The earth is the Lord's. Number two, the fullness thereof. Number three, the worlds. And number four, the inhabitants. They all belong to him. So if God decides to override your will, by what parameter do you say he is wrong? You see why the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Lying is based on a reference. And that reference does not apply to him. <laughs> 
that means if God decides that he's going to lift you tomorrow there is no authority that questions him because there is no reference that supervises him he submitted himself to his word not because of weakness are we together now it was a pattern so that we get to learn that he looked for one higher so that he would swear by not finding any he swore by himself to convince you that by this oath and by this promise he is dependable you get that now hmm. anyway so you know god by knowing his power the bible says our lord god thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power i have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongeth to the lord i explained to us the concept of el shaddai yesterday that el shaddai means literally the multi-breasted one is an attempt to show his extent of sufficiency remember the example i gave us yesterday that if a woman has two or three or four children when she's breastfeeding them two will have to be patient no matter how loving she is because she's limited she cannot serve all of them at the same time so when the bible calls him the multi-breasted one one does not have to suffer because he's attending to the other he is that vast his power can administer love to everyone without another person being affected this is how mighty he is when you know this you will know that as god is touching someone in america touching someone in europe his attention is not so is, is not so busy that he cannot attend to you you are talking to el shaddai right now we're here there is a conference somewhere across the globe there is someone praying somewhere at a retreat and the same god is hearing them and the same god will supply when you know that you can believe that this prayer that you have written there will be answered for the bible says and this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and that if he hears us then we know that we have our petitions granted you believe that shout amen, amen. so it's important that we know god the difference will be clear in this end time those who know God and those who do not. Hallelujah. Knowing God is not a gift. There is a labor to press, to study his nature. The end product of the knowledge of God is confidence. Please write it down. The end product of the knowledge of God is confidence. Your confidence is directly connected to your knowledge of God. And remember the Bible says to cast not away your confidence and it gives you that the reason why it says it has a great recompense of rewards there are rewards connected to being confident it was on the strength of the knowledge of God that David could stand before Goliath it was on the strength of the knowledge of God that the nation of Israel could stand before their enemies even enemies stronger and greater than themselves hallelujah but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. John 17 and verse 3, we considered that yesterday. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. At the apex of Paul's apostolic ministry, he vocalized his desire, his prayer point that I may know him not just that I may receive more from him that I may know him it is a very powerful prayer when you know God there are certain things that will lose their grip in your life it's true there are certain fears I told us yesterday that will die when you know God when you encounter him I've had the honor and privilege to have met him not just by scripture he has come to me the bible says blessed is every man that the lord causes to approach him there are certain levels of audacity you cannot have theoretically it is a product of a genuine encounter hallelujah this is not about blind bold face that leaves you with pain and, and shame and embarrassment this is an encounter with proof when moses met him it was clear when abraham met him it was clear in the name of jesus i'm praying for you that as this as this service is ongoing may someone come into an encounter with the god of the bible 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the capacity to believe God like you will be learning today what you call faith is a direct product of the confidence that is derived from your knowing God hallelujah there are certain fears that do not exist again when you meet him when you know him every time God tells me to do daring things and the moment the human nature wants to step in because of the magnitude the Spirit of God quickens the encounter of him that I had and doubt and fear dies immediately this is also the kind of revelation that sponsors creative miracles one day you will stand before situations that will challenge you and if you do not have an encounter bigger than that obstacle you will regret being a Christian at that point because you will wonder why did I give my life to Christ because I'm now mandated to bring this deliverance this healing this breakthrough and the mountains are staring you and there are times you need to know the one who is called the Lord Yahweh the earth is the Lord's if you know that there are you will be secured listen the knowledge of God has a therapeutic effect the average African the average Nigerian has been wounded from their background as a result of poverty or deprivation and there is only so much counseling and human therapy can do when his majesty appears to you and tells you he loves you it, it it imprints something upon your heart it says i have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness i have drawn you you want to be secured know god when you know god and you have an, a revelation of the one you look like you will resist naturally the pressure to become anything to please people no 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 all those things die permanently i'm telling you this cast not away your confidence for it has a great recompense of reward are we together now so today we're going to just take it off from there and then we'll pray by the spirit of god so lend me your attention the second dimension of knowledge that we need for our exploits in the kingdom is the knowledge of his ways the knowledge of his ways what we call the mysteries of the kingdom we're considering the laws of exploits hallelujah that second to the knowledge of God it is important that we understand the mysteries of the kingdom and please I want you to truly truly lend me your attention because this is where many believers get defeated this is where many believers get cheated in life and destiny because they hope that just because god loves them they hope that just because they are christians sincere christians that life will just happen for them in a way that their lives will become an expression of the glory of god and many eventually get disappointed this is true for ministers true for business people family people and so on in ephesians 1 and verse 3 the bible says blessed it says blessed be the father of our lord jesus christ please give it to us blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ let's finish it together one to go who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ notice that description the bible says the father of our lord jesus christ had blessed us the us every believer but he says he's blessed us with all not some all spiritual blessings and the bible says in heavenly places and in christ very powerful information in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe, let's read verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. The Bible says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. To what end? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
The Bible will tell us that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him. He says, but the Spirit of God, are we together now? That the Spirit of God has the singular assignment of making that which is in the heart of the Father reveal, to reveal it to the saints. And the Bible says that we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us second peter chapter one when we read from verse four the bible says wherefore i like verse four second peter chapter one please give us verse four whereby are given unto us is someone following exceeding great and precious promises it says by these promises that means when you take a hold of these promises and they become manifest in your life they validate the fact that in experience you have become a partaker of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss that means the zoe life that you have now received can only be made manifest to the scene of all men when you embrace these mysteries of the kingdom and engage them with understanding the difference between any two believers is not the love of god it's not even the will of god is the degree to which they have come into an experiential comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together now so we define our possibilities in this kingdom to the degree to which we understand the ways of God. This is very powerful. Our world is full of all kinds of believers. There are believers who consistently live defeated lives. Well-meaning, sincere believers. And they wonder why their lives are not able to speak his praises. And many times they think it's the will of God. But the will of God is not left. Uh, I mean, the will of God, we are not as a, at a loss. The Bible tells us that the Spirit of God has the singular assignment of bringing us into an understanding of the will of God. Is someone learning now? So just because you see a believer living a defeated life, sincerely so, does not mean that his condition is a reflection of God's desire for him. God's desire is captured clearly and revealed in his word. I am come, John 10, 10, that ye may have life. In fact, it starts by saying, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, I am come, listen carefully, that ye may have life. He was not talking to a preacher. He was not talking to a businessman. He was talking to any and every believer. I am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly do you believe this the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that it shineth more and more unto the perfect day more and more in ministry more and more in business more and more in your home in god's mind no believer should have a better yesterday no in his economy your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow more and more more and more that means the last time you sh you see me should be the least level you see me in that the next time you see me i should be a greater manifestation of the glory of god the bible says even among the stars one different from another in glory say in the name of jesus shout it with faith in the name of jesus i decree and declare that my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god one more time my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god believe this apostle but there is nothing in my life now that is an expression of what i just said did your bible not say for our light afflictions which is but for a moment it says that it worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory in fact he says in romans 8 18 i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he says are not worthy to be compared with the glory there is a dimension of god's glory that should be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of creation, he says, awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. You have to believe this. You have to believe this. This is how exploit comes. If you do not believe that it is in your destiny to become a reflection of the glory of God, you will live a weak and a defeated Christian life. 
blaming everybody and blaming everything reject every lie the devil has told you i don't care what is happening or not happening in your life you are in an atmosphere of faith my assignment is to shake away unbelief from your life believe that it is in your destiny to become a reflection of god's glory and while believing don't mind the naysayers while believing don't mind the situation there is a force in the spirit that can change things to be consistent with the will of god do you believe this there are few people in life who had the honor of being born great by our natural description of greatness many people found these principles and began to push their way let me tell you the truth there is no space waiting for you in destiny you create your space with understanding the illusion that there is a space waiting for you is a joke an expensive joke Adonai. if it will ever happen in your destiny there is a responsibility component my assignment tonight as we proceed is to get you angry you keep giving last year's excuses this year will look like last year you need to get angry in your spirit as a preacher as a business person it is not a blind anger it's an anger that is supported by light it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light hallelujah so when you know him your next assignment is to now begin to learn methodically the mysteries of the kingdom are the only ladders by which the saints ascend to the place of destiny these mysteries are ladders they are not an information that is what you climb to make prophecy happen it does not happen because it was spoken to you no there are many things that God and prophets said to people in the Bible that did not come to pass. Because that which they should do as far as engaging prophecy was not done. The Bible says forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. Not everywhere, in heaven. In heaven, not in your life. There is something you must do to make it settled. Please sit down. Are we learning so the bible tells us that god has given us all things all things every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in christ but watch this now let's go to job chapter 38 and verse 33 let me your attention now job was having a discussion with god at this point job was frustrated he could not make sense of the things that had been happening around his life back to back to back to back this guy kept hearing bad news I, I i wonder how the kind of emotional strength job had is noteworthy that in one day you come with a report you lose your estate you lose your children and there is always one witness left at the end of it the bible says he bowed down and he worshiped but he did not stop there one day job got angry and he said god we need to talk we need to talk and then God asked Job one question that he's asking you tonight. This question holds the key to your exploits this year. I'm praying that God will open your eyes to see. Let's read together. If we can have NIV, else that would be fine. Job 38 and verse 33. It says, knowest thou, all right, go ahead. NIV, ready? Let's read. One to read. Do you know the laws of the heavens? And can you set up God's dominion using those laws in the earth? Do you know the laws that regulate heaven? Heaven is not just heaven just because God is there. There are mysteries that make heaven a place of dexterity. He says, have you mastered the art of transporting those realities? It is by those realities you will exert dominion upon the earth. 
Do you know the laws of the heavens? And can you use them to set up God's dominion? Not on the earth. Over the earth. What makes heaven so dexterous? There is no record of God roaming around heaven supervising loyalty. Yet disloyalty is judged immediately. What law did he put in place? What makes heaven a place of abundance? What makes heaven a place of love? He's saying that those realities, you can take those principles and transport them to your life. He says, let it be done in earth, not on earth as it is done in heaven. Your kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. The first earth is not the ground. You, the earthen vessel, let his will be done in your life. Listen. When Jesus was teaching us to pray, this is what he said. He said, when you pray, pray thus. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Notice now, your kingdom come. Do you know why? Because when his kingdom comes and his will is being done, the remaining part of the prayer, you will not need to pray it again. Give us our daily bread, forgive us our sins. Are we together now? That those other parts of the prayer only become necessary because his kingdom has not come and his will has not been done. Hallelujah. So, the believer's life is at the mercy of your understanding. Please sit down and engage in the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, please pay attention. I have taught you that the word of God is a compendium of all the possibilities that are contained in God. Are we together? Every time you open the Bible, you are interacting with the mysteries of the kingdom. These are the forces that control dominion. Dominion is not an impartation. You have heard me say it. It's the resultant effect of your understanding and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. You define your possibilities upon the strength of understanding. What are the possibilities that are available for us in Christ? Lend me your attention as I list them for you. Favor, speed, lifting. In fact, you find them captured in the worship that was in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5. Worthy is the lamb that was slain, he said, to receive for us. And he begins to list them, seven of them. But there are many more. Everything that makes for the revelation of the glory of God in your life is connected to a mystery let me repeat myself everything that makes for the revelation of the glory of god in your life is connected to a mystery look up please financial prosperity is connected to a mystery divine health and healing is connected to a mystery speed is connected to a mystery honor connected to a mystery favor connected to a mystery longevity connected to a mystery influence connected to a mystery are we together now the anointing even in ever increasing dimensions connected to a mystery don't just desire the outcomes you must learn the mysteries that connect to the results you desire so there is just blind desire with all due respect in the body of christ the average believer can tell you what he desires instinctively we know that if my life becomes a capture of health passion consecration prosperity speed honor imagine that kind of believer paint that picture in your mind such a wholesome believer that has a rich capture of the glory of god but the average believer cannot explain to you intelligently the mysteries that are connected to their desires king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Listen, as I'm speaking to you, you are not just hearing a man. There is an anointing that is quickening your spirit. Something is happening to you. I'm not a lecturer. Are we together? These are spirit communications. Something is happening within your spirit, man, that will stop you from being ordinary. He said in Ezekiel 2 and verse 2, And the Spirit entered me when he spake unto me. 
the mysteries of the kingdom so when you find certain believers living exceptional lives through diligence through submission to instructions taking advantage of the grace of god they have found one or more or many and you see the keys for your dominion are finite they are not infinite like a curriculum that a student passes through his learning continues but you can exhaust a curriculum the bible calls it marvelous light it is the curriculum that controls our dominion you can exhaust it and know you have held the keys of the kingdom do you believe this so you will find men who experience this transition in the spirit on account of light something would have happened to them and you see certain results godlike in their nature these are not results that humans can afford you don't get it in the bank you don't get it in the marketplace they have mastered the art of importing divine realities from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest here and now this is what it means to be a living epistle that your life becomes a continuation of someone's bible study god refers you to men who want to learn him your life is an on on unending wonder not a theoretical wonder not an assumed wonder is someone learning now please look at me i'm standing right here with several prayer requests there are several of them here i'm sure there are several of them that will be coming did you know that almost every one prayer request here that you see there is a mystery that is connected to that outcome did you hear what i said it is true for most people their major problem centers around finances or perhaps their health are we together or perhaps a job perhaps some destiny helper to lend you their attention did you know that nothing just happens this is where both science and religion agree talk to me intelligent people you went to school yeah sir isaac newton in his study of mechanics he postulated certain laws and remember one of the laws says a body in a uniform motion or state of rest it will remain that way except compelled by an external force to act otherwise what is the meaning of that that means every condition remains like that until a force greater than what keeps it is exerted it is true it is true listen this is not entertainment this is your destiny everything that means this year will be like last year and every other year until you engage something this year that you did not engage last year hallelujah what do you know that controls speed what do you know that controls favor you believe people will just like you like that whereas god already told you that the whole world lies in wickedness in this biased bedeviled world who will forget about their problems and suddenly focus on you no there is an energy that light brings it compels creation to respond to you in a certain way please find a way of believing this it is true man of god i hate to be a bearer of bad news but ministry this year will be like last year until you show me the light that bails you out yes sir yes sir i like the bible arise it says and shine it says for your light not for time has gone mm -mm. for your light has come for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen on upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth to who are bohu confusion and chaos and darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of god shall arise i receive verse 3 for myself it says gentiles shall come shall come of course nobody leaves what works gentiles shall come to your light not to you to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising may this be your testimony in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the level and the extent of light that will rest upon you you will command dominion 
you will tame life like an animal upon the strength of understanding you believe that shout amen please sit down please sit down so what most believers do is to just guess and hope this is really the punchline in my discussion that guessing and hoping and wishing for time to on its own deliver to you that which you desire will leave you disappointed i don't have to be a prophet to tell you the word of god already tells us there was a man who who in john 5 he laid down near a pool reverend sam for 38 years i hope you know 38 years starts with one year then two years then three years he would have said no by the fourth year no he remained there and every year the possibility for his deliverance kept happening the oldest situation that the bible names the bible gives timing to tragedies that man's own was the highest we know aside from the nation of israel that a single man he sat down there proximity to the source of deliverance but one year became two years three years four years five years by the 15th year they are giving birth to somebody who came and joined him there and the person left and left the person there then jesus came to him and said why are you in this condition and he said i have no man he knew the power of relationships but that was the only mystery he knew he didn't know that there are other mysteries also hmm. the danger of knowing only there are many people who know some things but not sufficient to give them the victory they desire reminds me of a very great man of god in acts chapter 18. the bible tells us that this man was born at alexandria eloquent in scripture fervent in spirit but he knew only the baptism of john you must be aware of the knowing only syndrome <laughs> It is not a key every every house here has several keys reverend sam and just because you have the key that brings you inside the house does not mean you have the keys to the rooms the kitchen can be locked you are in the house but you do not have the key to the kitchen you will know the value of that key when you are hungry am i right on that yes when you see people walk in dominion it is not just their persona it is that within them they have held keys when they stand before the things that plague men they check within their spiritual archives and there is a key there is a key oh i don't like you we leave you you're not getting this job again and rather than crying they smile because there is another key they know what to engage that will wake a destiny helper up all through the night did the bible not say someone came to knock a door of his friend and he said no it's too late and there was something he did he wanted only three loaves but the friend gave him as many as he wanted do you know what that key is you see the stories and the parables in the bible are beyond just a storyline within them there are mysteries the bible says revelation in the knowledge of him so revelation is hidden in knowledge just because you have knowledge does not mean it has been revealed to you revelation is a mystery that is hidden in knowledge you can read a story and then find the light from within it hallelujah apostle i want to experience favor this year can i know what you have engaged or are engaging for the favor i just know god will do it i entered this this year believing god let me tell you up front i really hate to be a bearer of bad news but you are already programming disappointment because it doesn't happen that way light of the world you've stepped down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that should be your prayer you're the light of the world You've stepped down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. 
Will you open my eyes? Let me see. Open my eyes. Let me see. That God will show you the way out. I'm waiting for my uncle to get an appointment. He promised me that when he gets it, he will give me a job. Whereas your uncle is also waiting for help. So you become pained and you become frustrated. But is it not in your Bible that they looked unto him and their faces were lightened? Except you do not believe it. I hope you are not just shouting yes for nothing. You really believe what I'm saying? Yes. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.